whose voice do I like in my head more than female voices? As you can see, these are the books that I read and they're all, almost all, by female authors. Hi, my name is Florence and I'm a black woman living in Germany and welcome to my recap of the books that I read in October. I love books. I love reading books by female authors. I love having female authors in my head uh, and I am biased. Hopefully I will change and try and read more books by male authors, but I find myself just reaching for books by female authors. So these are the books that I read in October. I read a total of, let me check again because I have a list on my phone. Three, four, five. Ah, I read a total of five books, four by female authors and one by a male author. So let's start. Um, and um, a question just before I go on, uh, please let me know what is the percentage when you look at the books that you're reading, how many are by male authors and how many are by female? Mine, uh, I would say female authors lie at about 80% and 20% are male authors. Or um, I would say, yeah, um, and well, let's say 75 by female, uh, 15 by male. That's um, 95. And then 5% by uh, people who are gender neutral. So interesting. Uh, let's see. I would love to hear how your percentage looks like. So the first book that I read, I'm not going in order of when I read them. Uh, it's just the one that is on top. And the first book is Dust Child by Nguyen Fan Kumai. And this book was recommended by uh, Bukola, who is a book, bookish friend based in the UK. And uh, she really, really loves this book. And she's been talking about it to me. So, I, of course, I had to get it. I think I got it for my birthday months ago. And it's the, it's a, the book is follows... Uh, two, let's just say, I would say four point of views, but the, the main ones are two sisters who are um, born in Vietnam. And they are born to a family of poor farmers. So, of course, uh, it's, the story starts just around 1969 when the Vietnam War is going on. And we see Americans also getting involved in this war. And the sisters then decide to move to the big city, Saigon, um, to try and find a way of earning a living for their parents, and especially their father who was in the war and came back really, really injured. So they move to the big city um, and they start working as burgers. And we just know uh, women in conflicts women are the most affected when it comes to conflicts. And of course, they go into this profession where they are forced to do things that they do not want to do uh, just so that they can earn money. And most of their clients are the American soldiers. And one of them meets an American soldier and they fall in love and um, things happen. Uh, just a lot of sad, happy and sad things. And then we also are given a point of view of an American soldier who has come back to Vietnam to try and quell his, I would say, his post-traumatic trauma uh, and, and to search for a child that he has found out that he had. And then we also f uh, are given a point of view of a young man born of a union between an Ameri black American soldier and a Vietnamese woman. And uh, that's where I found out about a generation called Amerasians. These were children who were born of unions between American soldiers and uh, Vietnamese women. And they experienced so much racism in Vietnam because they are not ex accepted. They are of darker skin. And there's a lot of colorism, especially in the Asian community. So um, they are not only dark, but they are... They have curly hair, so and they're children of the enemy. So they really, really, they're victims of a lot of, 
yeah, a lot of racism and they're just um, othered by the community and they, they are looking for somewhere to belong. And we find out that there were so many of them who were abandoned in orphanages. There's a lot of heartache, a lot of loss, a lot of trauma. And uh, I love that the book also tried to bring up forgiveness and redemption for those who are affected. I absolutely enjoyed reading this book. It gave me a different point of view about the Vietnam Vietnam War because we hear it mostly we when we listen when we hear about the Vietnam War all we hear about is who won and who lost and all that but the real heartbreaking stories are the people who are affected by the Viet by such wars and uh, as we are living in a mom, in a time where there is just one military invasion after another it's always just good to remember humanity the people who are the vic the real victims of such wars so i i absolutely loved reading this book she also has another book i believe mountain sing which i am also hoping to read too but highly highly recommend this next is another book that i even i did um uh, a deep dive on uh you can check on my on my channel, I think it's the previous, two previous videos ago, and it's A Woman Is No Man by Etta Froome. Uh, Etta Froome is a Palestinian um, author based in the US, and uh, she writes a book about patriarchy, <laughs> patriarchy, 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 uh, and especially in the times of, of war. We see who suffers the most, um, the women and children. Um, and we follow the story of Isra. Isra is born in uh, Palestine. She she has her parents and she has uh, a brother. But of course, because of patriarchy and just the what is deemed as normal, she doesn't get a chance to go to school uh, because who educates a woman? Uh, it's like pouring water on the ground, you know, educating a, a girl. So um, she's married off um, to Adam. Adam comes from the U.S. and um, Isra in her heart thinks that maybe if I go to the U.S. I will live a more free life. I will get to experience a different life. She moves to the U.S. and she lives, she now lives with Adam's family and Adam's mom who is called Farida. And we realize that she has just, it's just like falling out of the frying pan into the fire because Inside this house, it's even worse than when she was with her parents. And she just tries to wonder how, is this the life that a woman is supposed to have? Uh, she's not allowed to go out uh, uh, on a way out of the house alone, unaccompanied. Her husband is just working so hard. She gets to see him less and less. Then there's a beginning of DV um, that she and he was. And... Um, she starts getting children. Of course, she's expected to, to give them kids. And she just starts having children. And it's one girl after another, one girl after another. And, and she experienced a lot of emotional, uh, physical, and um, financial, I would also say financial abuse from her family. Um, and then she gives birth to the four kids. And one of them is Deya. So... We are uh, the story moves from the different time time st time stamps. So we are told the story of Isra tells her story, and Dea, who is her daughter, also tells her story. And Dea is all, is almost seventeen, and she's living with her grandmother Farida. And as her classmates are trying, they are working hard and applying for college. She is meeting sweeters. People are coming, men from everywhere. Her grandmother brings men to her, uh, to her. And she keeps on saying no to the marriage proposal because she's just like, I feel like there's more to life. So we just see a mixture of, yeah, the, the patriarchy and all its schemes and all its powers and all its tentacles just moving through the, the lives of these three women. This book really, it acted me, it made me, made me just want to reach out to women who are going through this. And um, 
Even reach out to women who have gone through this. Let us not be agents of patriarchy. Even when we were victims, let us bring change. Um, but it was such, such a great read. An important book, um, no matter what culture you come from, uh, it just makes you want to appreciate the girl child and everything that the girl child goes through and hoping that the girl child gets a, a better life in future. Uh, yeah, a really, really important book. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. I gave it a five star. Uh, the next book that I read, this I read with um, The Hangout Cafe, uh, which is a book club. And it's for such a time, for such a time as this by Shani Akila. And uh, this book is a collection of short stories uh, based on characters of Caribbean, African descent, uh, like young, young characters who are living in the UK. And uh, it is based around the time of the pandemic. So they are facing life, uh, grappling with the, the pandemic and everything that came with it. Also, as they are going on with their lives, you know, romantic lives, friendships, uh, work, uh, racism, um, chronic people who are suffering from chronic pain, um, just leading life as uh, black people in uh, as a, a, a minority in the UK. And it because it's different stories, I love just reading the point of views of every single character. She wrote it so well. It is such an easy read and um, very, very entertaining. And in as much as the characters were younger than me, I could still relate to some of the things that they were going through. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. And their author is very sweet. I follow her on, on Instagram and she's so young and so talented and so determined. Uh, and it's just nice that she she put together her feelings and um wrote this. I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, the next book that I read that I don't have a physical copy of because I read it on, on, on Audible, uh, but I've also ordered a physical copy is Children of the Chil Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. Yeah, I think I have that right. And it is a YA fantasy book. I am not the biggest fantasy reader, unfortunately, uh, but I try and dip my feet once in a while when when uh, a book comes to my radar that people love. And this is one of the books that people really talk uh, great of. So, of course, I had to get it and I loved it. I, I enjoyed reading it. Um, it follows the story of a young girl, Zeli, and of course, and her brother. Um, and uh, they're in this small village that is controlled by the king. There's a king who is really, really evil. <laughs> and uh, their mother passed away, um, was unalived by the king and his soldiers uh, because her mother and people who, people like her mother have Magi, they they have mag they are able to to do magic, yeah. To do, I'm terrible at explaining fantasy. <laughs> you can tell, um, but they can do magic. So the king is the king was afraid of them. Um, I don't know why. I don't understand why because probably he was afraid of them because he didn't understand. You know, most people are usually afraid of things that they don't understand. So he tried to get rid of them. And um, the mom was unfortunately one of them who, who was unalive by the king. So on, and on, the, on top of that, the king is taxing these people. He doesn't want them to work. They only work in some um, like enclosed places called stocks. Um, and he's just trying to make them actually just disappear and make magic disappear. And, and Zeli is just a young girl who is um, talented and who, who feels like she's a revolutionary. She can't help herself because she remembers what happened to her mother and there's just the, the fighter in her. So when she is chosen to um, help bring back magic to the 
to, to the country. Uh, she sets out with her brother and with um, a young, uh, another girl that they met by chance who is totally not from her, like her circle is from a totally different circle. And they set out to bring magic back. And it's, it's an exhilarating ride. I enjoyed every single, single be, uh, bit of this book. I, I was listening to it and I just remember not wanting anyone to talk to me. I was just like, what's going to happen next? What go what's going to happen next? The ending was a bit disappointing for me because I love happy endings, things wrapped up in a bow. But of course I knew that it's a series, it's three books. So it's supposed to continue. So I am going to get the next book, uh, even though I've read that uh, the second book wasn't as good as the first one. But of course, she left me hanging with the first book. And since I enjoyed it so much, I would love to read the second book. And yeah, I'm happy that I read it, uh, a fantasy book that I enjoyed and I gave it. I haven't written a, a full review on it on um on Goodreads, but I would give it a four star. Four and a half, probably. <laughs> four and a half, I would give it a four and a half. One of my favorite fantasy uh, books ever. And then last but not least is also a book that I don't have a physical copy of because I borrowed it from my friend. It's called Invisible Stories from Kenya's Queer Community by Kev, Kevin Mwashiro. And I don't have the physical copy because I borrowed it from a friend. And it is, like I've said, it's a collection of short stories of, let's say, essays or, yeah, short stories by the Kenyan, the queer community in Kenya, especially men. Um, Kev Moshiro or Kevin Moshiro, we met him at um, in Berlin at the African Book Festival Queer Edition. He was leading one of the panels. And, of course, he came with his book and uh, we got a chance to get one of get one of one of the books and he is um a gay man a, a Kenyan gay man and um he collected stories from different uh people living in people in the gay community in Kenya who unfortunately are living um in the dark, not in the dark, how do I say it? They are living hidden. They're leading hidden lives because of uh, fear of coming out and living their true selves. Uh, some are married and some are from religious community where queerness is not um, allowed. And especially Ke Kenya is, in as much as, being queer is not illegal, um, but still there's a lot of homophobia. And um, it, it was just, it's heartbreaking, but it's also encouraging to read uh, stories from this community because these are voices that are usually silenced. Um, and I enjoyed reading that. As in as, yeah, in as much as they were heartbreaking, I'm glad that Kev Moshiro did his part by just... Uh, listening to these gay men and writing down their words and allowing us to read these words and allowing us to know that they exist and giving these gay men also the, the f freedom, the, the chance, the opportunity to live as they, as they want to, even if it's just in, in a book. Yeah. It is so important for, for people to live in their truth in whichever form and way they want to exist. So I really love the book um, and I hope to read more and more of such books. And of course, I'm, think, I'm grateful to authors like Kev who, who, yeah, who are activists, who, who are standing in front and leading people who may not be comfortable enough or feel safe enough to to come out and live fully as themselves. Yeah. So those are the books that I read in in October. Uh, I'm happy with the books that I read. I I enjoyed m my reading and um, the books that made me think. Um, 
there are times where I read a book and it's very, very light and very happy. But I also love reading books that are deep, which make me think and uh, just make me want to learn more and think about what can I do? How can I help? So October was a really, really great book reading month for me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and um, give me a comment. You can even just put in a book emoji uh, if you've reached this uh, part of this video and don't forget to subscribe and share. Share your books, share your book recommendations. I'm always looking for new books even when I have more than enough. Uh, but I'm a book lover and I just love reading diversely. And I hope that my recommendation also help you find more diverse books. Thank you so much and see you in the next video. Bye.